point lines so we are getting this out a tad bit later than usual but in less than around 10 or so hour time we are going to be getting the release of the thousand year blood war zenith summons gravitation a new banner featuring the long-awaited anime versions of masaki and also ishi the banner itself is releasing tomorrow 31st of may at 8 in the morning for me in the uk and will be lasting until the 15th of june once that banner leaves that's when we are then getting the individual banners where you have a one percent chance to get the character you want these are the better banners to pull on if you only particularly want the one character and in this case ishin's banner will be lasting from the 15th to the 21st and Misaki's banner will be available from the 21st all the way to the 27th unfortunately in her case the second this banner does leave is the second the end of month banner of june it does get announced so you won't be able to know what end of month of june is while these banners are still active with that said though let's have a look at the two new characters first off starting with Misaki, a great addition to the power attribute as she is a human quinty power character with the espada kill ability now Misaki is a character that mainly excels in guild quest content but not restricted to guild quest content as none of her skills are for that particular game modes you can tell though that she is designed for guild quest given her espada kill ability and the fact that she does have a barrage attack sa2 which is capable of doing a lot of damage and also has an easy chance of inflicting status elements which is what this character wants to do to deal with even more damage because the damage output of this character is actually relatively high, especially once she does inflict the status of him. And that's thanks to the fact that she has Frenzy plus 2, a 60% Berserk on. When you inflict a status of him, you get a 120% spiritual pressure boost. And that in of itself is already insane. But upon damaging a paralyzed enemy, which she can inflict paralysis on every single attack, she will then do 80% more damage. 40% of that is coming from damage to paralyzed enemies, and then the other 40% is to any enemy that is inflicted with a status on and this is a team party buff that goes to any power attribute Quincy, so any future potential power character that is a Quincy, in a way, naturally gets better by having Masaki in the team, so there's some potential good team support synergy this Masaki could have with potential future Quincy characters. Now, one great thing about Masaki, given that a lot of her damage output is tied behind the fact that she has to inflict a status on she actually does have an increased chance to inflict status element in this case against any aranka so it's not tied behind attribute as long as she is up against arankas she will have that increased chance to inflict status element and of course that's going to be really good for guild quest content and overall just make her a very solid character whenever there are aranka enemies with this skill and the strong attack that she does have it's very likely that in any given phase in any given wave of guild quest the enemies that you are attacking are going to get inflicted with paralysis where at that point you're doing 80 percent more damage on top of the fact that you're already getting the 120 percent sp boost but then it also means your two side characters in guild quest content can freely attack the character without any worry about taking any damage themselves Overall, in my opinion, while she is really just designed for Guild Quest content, I think her kit, while a bit awkward outside of Guild Quest, is still good enough as is. And visually, I think this character looks great. If you are a Masaki fan, you can definitely do a lot of things with this character, mainly in Guild Quest content, but you can definitely take her outside of Guild Quest. And given that she is a power character, she's overall a very strong character to the attribute, and more characters like this are needed in an attribute that desperately does need it. Overall, a very solid character, but for most people, her usage is going to be strictly restricted into Guild Quest content. As for our second character, though, we have a new 1000 Year Blood War Ishin, a mind story per captain with the Quincy kill ability. Now, Ishin is certainly not to be an absolute powerhouse of a character, potentially one of the hardest hitting characters in the game, and that strictly comes down to the damage output that he does have, thanks to the skills Friendly Plus 2, a 50% Berserk on. Just like Masaki, once he does inflict a status limit, which he does have an increased chance to against any heart attribute enemy he will then get a 120% SP boost. That in of itself is already great as is, but he's also the first mind character in the game to have the Rampage skill, which therefore gives him 2% more damage every kill that he does get, capping at 100%. This is the first character in the year 2024 that has gotten Rampage. The last time we did see Rampage was in September of 2023, so it's been quite some time. They're very, very hesitant, that being Caleb, on putting this skill on any character. So I think it's quite commendable that this character was given this skill, especially with the other skills that he does have, make him a very hard hitting character that in combination with the strong attacks that he does have a launch into a homing vortex full screen attack he's going to be a very very good character in any content where you have to bring a mind character if you are an Ishin fan and you've been desperately wanting a new good playable Ishin, this is going to be your anniversary character of the year to a certain extent. Besides the fact that just like Masaki, this character looks visually amazing, he's also going to play amazing. Very smooth, strong attack hit, really high damage output, you really can't ask for any more. Now, given his Quincy kill ability, 
it means even though in an attribute where we have some other great characters like Yuha Bark and also a fan of Ashi White, Ishin in a way is still able to stand in his own accords as he doesn't really clash with any of those two characters. Likewise, if you are struggling in the melee Quincy Guild quest, which is yet to happen yet, this character is going to make a very, very good lead. Right now, the best lead in the melee Quincy Guild quest, given that he does have a tracking vortex SA2, which can apply less rate, which pairs very well with the newly released Fierce Battle Grimjow, who wants to do more damage to last rated enemies. Another thing to keep in mind too in Guild Quest content is that given that he is a mind story buff, he actually does get the buffs from Academy Shuhei. In this case, getting a 20% strong attack damage increase and 40% more damage to enemies inflicted with a status omen. This means he's able to do a ridiculous amount of damage if you do pair him with Shuhei, potentially getting some very, very fast clear times, even in very hard Guild Quest, especially in level 1. Overall, a very powerful mind character. Gonna be really good in the upcoming Limit Breaker quest, potentially future Limit Breaker quest, and gets even better if you have Academy Shuhei and or someone like Yuha, if you do plan to use him in Limit Breaker, as Yuha does allow him to get the recharge in between stages, overall making the character significantly more fun. That's it for the two new banner characters, and now let's have a look at the filler pool. In this case, for the first time ever, Yamamoto is now featured as a filler character. Yamamoto, in my opinion, still holds up relatively well. He's definitely starting to get phased out with these newer characters. As of late, we've been getting a lot of really good melee holo killers and even melee, as we can see with this current issue. How to say that though, I think Yamato is still a very fun character with some cool visuals, great strong attack hit, and still a good enough damage output. If you don't ever pull on his banner when it does get a rerun, which I don't think is really worth it nowadays, you might not even have this character. And if you are missing him, he's definitely a good character to pick up, and it is nice that he's finally featured as a filler character. As for the other characters though, they are all resurrectable, many offering good links. As for playable characters, they, it is a bit hard to use them, I will be honest. Basby is actually one of the rare examples of actually being a good playable SP character in my opinion. Definitely still lacking compared to some of the newer speed characters, but if you are a Basby fan, you can get a lot of fun out of him. His resurrection in particular does have him pick up more Berserker, an SP boost, and even Guard Break. It's a very good resurrection, right now the best of the year, best in the game. Yugum is a brave battle character and his resurrection definitely makes him a lot more usable. I tested him out myself and I think he's really only good in brave battles if you have him duped out to maybe be a good stall unit against someone like Orihime, the current best brave battle character in the game. Given that he does have attributes advantage against her, if you have Yugum 5 out of 5, maybe go with a full defensive build, you unironically you can use him in the current brave battle meta. Oryu is mainly just going to be a link for your better technique characters that being recharge and also more strong attack damage at full stamina. Likewise with Orihime, mainly a link for your better power characters like Masaki for example, as she is a recharge and more strong attack damage at full stamina link. Oetsu is still usable in the melee Serpent Guild quest, decent auto character in point events if you like his character, and then Renji once more is more so just a link for your better power characters offering recharge and also full stamina damage. It's a standard that Thousand Year Blood will only consist of Thousand Year Blood War characters, and that in itself is kind of a problem, right? Besides Yamamoto, most of the other characters here are just links. And I think whether you want to pull on this banner really comes down to how many of these characters you are missing. But if you are in the case where you have Yamamoto Max Transfer, did you have the entire banner already? Duplicates of them don't really matter then it definitely makes these characters, new characters, less worth pulling for. In my opinion, Roma, Saki, and Ishin are great characters, great addition to the game and their respective attributes. And I think they look to be very fun. I myself will be doing around seven steps tomorrow morning. I do think in a way, this is a very easy skip. It really depends on if you like the characters. If you're a massive fan of Masaki and Ishin, then summon for the characters, right? That's the best way to play this game. Pull for your favorite characters. If you're a bit hesitant on wanting them and you don't really like what they offer in your account, then this is a very easy skip, save for the upcoming banners. Remember, next month, this time next month, we will be getting the swimsuit banner, which has the potential chance to be a Yoruichi and or burn the witch swimsuit characters. So if you are interested in those characters, the possibility of that even happening, you might want to save for that, right? And then likewise, the ninth anniversary is two months away. July 23rd, July 31st, part one and two of the anniversary. The characters themselves are going to be significantly better than these two characters here. The character choice is going to be a lot better, right? We don't know who they're going to do for the anniversary, part one and two, but you know they're going to come with some big heavy hitters. So if the anniversary is so close, maybe it's not really best right now to pull on a two character banner, but it ultimately comes down to you. I think if you want to summon on this banner, it really depends on how many orbs you can gather up for the anniversary. In my case, as of right now, I have around 8,000 orbs and I can gather up 10,000 by the time the anniversary comes out, even if I pull on this banner, if I limit myself to around seven or so steps. If I was only sitting on 2,000 orbs, I would probably skip this banner and save all my orbs for anniversary. These two characters are overall very good, but ultimately, it comes down to if you are a Misaki and Ishin fan. If you are like me, do a couple summons. If not, maybe wait for the anniversary, because those are going to be the characters you want to get in any given year. Either way, though, let me know in the console if you are summoning on this banner. Again, myself, I'll plan to do 7 to 10 steps. We'll see how it does go. I plan to stop once I get one of them. 
and then I might go on in the individual banner depending on the character that I am missing. Either way, good luck on your summons tomorrow if you are summoning, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and peace.